Froebel's Kindergarten, the origins of early childhood education. In 1838, the German educator Friedrich Froebel laid the foundations of modern education when he opened the Play and Activity Institute. Froebel soon called his institute a kindergarten, reflecting his belief that young children should be nurtured and nourished like plants in a garden. Froebel, who studied under the Swiss educator Johann Pestalozzi, established the idea that games and play are typical and essential forms of life. Activities in that kindergarten included singing, dancing, gardening, and self-directed play. Quality time spent like this was a considerable improvement in the life of many children, given that the alternative was often to help parents with work. He also introduced the concept of fray or bait, which can be translated into free work. During set periods of time, children were allowed to work on things by themselves. Where many adults saw pointless play, Froebel saw important learning taking place. While practicing their concentration skills and resilience, the children also learned about engineering, logic, and physics. To help facilitate this process, he developed a set of educational toys known as Froebel Gifts. The set contained 20 objects such as balls, blocks, and sticks. Froebel carefully designed the toys to help the children in this kindergarten recognize and appreciate the common patterns and forms found in nature. These innovative ideas soon found Apple and many young educators came to learn from Froebel and to see the immense potential displayed by children at his institute. Later, Many of Froebel's students opened their own kindergarten and Germany experienced a rapid growth in the numbers of early childhood centers. Then something bad happened. After suppressing the German revolutions of 1848 to 49, the Prussian government started a crackdown on new democratic ideas and women are forbidden from being politically active. The fact that some are operating a kindergarten all by themselves was seen as problematic. And so it didn't take long for the government to label Froebel's kindergarten ideas as dangerous to both the state and church. Soon all schools that followed Froebel's principles were banned. For Froebel, who saw his life's work destroyed and the future of all the children disrupted, this was a terrible blow. He died in dismay just a year later. But the ban caused the diaspora of kindergartners who could no longer work in Germany, spreading Froebel's ideas all over the world. One of Froebel's students founded the first kindergarten in the United States in 1856. But the story was far from being over. Exactly 20 years later, a young woman named Anna Lloyd Jones stumbled upon a set of Froebel's gifts in her visit to the first World's Fair in the United States. Anna, a teacher by training, was so excited by the wooden toys that she bought a set for her nine-year-old son. Little Frank loved the toys his mother brought home and began building all kinds of geometrical structures, first with the wooden toys, later in miniatures, and with other materials. Without formal training, Frank Lloyd Wright became one of the world's most renowned architects responsible for some of the most iconic buildings in modern architecture, many of which resemble Froebel's toy blocks. Germany lifted its ban on kindergartens in 1860, realizing that it was a terrible mistake. And while Froebel was not around anymore to witness the rebirth of his ideas in his homeland, they continued to spread around the world and become an inspiration for Maria Montessori, Werlof Steiner, and many others who set out to innovate formal education. Froebel once said that play is the highest expression of human development in childhood, for it alone is the free expression of what is in a child's soul. Frank Lloyd Wright described the influence of such play in his approach to design as follows. For several years, I sat at the little kindergarten tabletop and played with the cube, the sphere, and the triangle. 
these smooth wooden maple blocks. All are in my fingers to this day. How was your personal experience with play and learning when you were young? Did you go to kindergarten? And what are your thoughts on the play as a way of growth and development?